Hello, my name is Leo. Welcome to a new day of the Elder Scrolls Arena. It is now the third of... Oh, come on. You finally made it to the month that you, that you wanted it to be. Yeah. What month is that again? Oh, God. Morning Star. Uh, yes, the other one was Sun's... Sun's Dawn, or...? Whatever, it's the third of morning stuff. We're fast traveling to uh, Orcrest. Is that, is that where we're going to? Yeah. So now that we don't have any Lord's missions on the um, on the agenda, we can now maybe you know do a little bit of little little missions and maybe try to get try to get a Lord's mission. But still, you know, more or less working our way towards Valenwood. That got me to thinking about artifacts. I actually did a bit of research about artifacts. Because the description of all these artifacts in Arena is that they just mysteriously disappear after a while. And I was like, man, if I get the skeleton key, that, which is the whole reason why we're going to Valenwood, it'll really suck if it just magically disappears. Well, it's not really how it works. And the way it works is that the items have a charge value. And if, or if it's a weapon... You know, they've obviously got their, du you know, durability. And if they break, well, I don't know if you run out of charge, well, then they just disappear. And then, I was like, oh, well, the whole reason why I became a knight, in case you didn't know my character is a knight, the whole reason I decided to become a knight in the whole first place was, A, I wanted to be able to use any weapon and use almost all armor. I think I can't wear leather armor, but apart from that, I can do everything else. Right, you can care about magic, who cares about that anyway. <clears throat> well, except for maybe, um, healing would be nice, but, yeah, it's fine. That's what potions are for. Yeah, pretty much. So, the second thing, the reason why I chose knight is because knights have uh, an innate ability to automatically repair weapons and armor. Now, in the game... You can have, let's say you've got a full set of ebony gear. Everything's got durability. And the more you use it, the more you get hit, the more you use your sword, the more that durability goes down. When it goes down all the way, the thing breaks and you can't use it anymore. Which would suck for me. Now, you can go to a blacksmith and repair your weapons and armor. But this takes time. And if you want it done faster, you got to pay more money. Now... Normally, it's not a big deal. For me, though, considering that I'm only doing one in-game day per real day, it would suck if I have to send my awesome adamantium longsword in for repair, and they tell me that it's going to take, you know, 60-something days or whatever. That's two months that i got to wait before I can use the sword again. It would just be not feasible. So, I decided... This is before I didn't realize about this whole fast traveling fiasco. I thought I could actually walk to other um, cities. But anyway, that's, that's neither here nor there. Um, but, um, what was I going to say? But yeah, so I, ch I chose Knight so that I wouldn't have to deal with that. Uh, which which is great. One thing that, you know, I, well, I didn't know that I could do was... Um, I didn't think that, you know, with the uh, magical items, you know, once you run out of charge, well, that's it. Well, I, I didn't know, but you can actually take them to blacksmiths and actually repair them in the same way. Now, fortunately, it would appear that knights don't have the innate ability to repair such items, which sucks. Um, but apparently, uh, I think, what, what's the best thing I've got? I think it's a, a mark and it does, like, for the force bolt. Which is actually a really good attack because it paralyzes them. I can actually... I think I've only got three charges left. If I um, take that to a blacksmith, they should be able to repair it. Now, that'd be a really cool idea, wouldn't it? Then I wouldn't have to carry around all these other stupid things. Also, I found out that uh, at least for bracelets, you can have ebony bracelets. No, was it bracelets or braces? Whatever it was, you can have ebony of them. I don't think you can have ebony... Uh, crystals or ebony marks though no so you probably have a you'd have a uh, the force bolt was really good have some sort of fire projectile or lightning projectile or whatever have a sanctuary because sanctuary is pretty cool it'd be nice if I could have healing actually 
if you've got one, if you can find one, and then just have Ebony for everything else. And then, when it runs out, have it repaired. I don't know how that's going to work, though. Uh, I know what you mean. Because, right, normally, let's say it'll take 30 days to, repair, to uh, increase the charge on my accessory. Let's say it's a ring, yeah? I got a ring. <coughs> um, now, if I just waited, right, if I bought an inn, waited, whatever, and just literally stayed in that town for 60 days waiting, go back, I wouldn't have a problem getting my thing, my ring back. But, if I do it the way that I am actually doing it, and go visit other towns, and then come back and have this huge log, there is a chance, uh, it is known, it is known Khaleesi, that there is a chance that a glitch might occur where the blacksmith no longer remembers the fact that he's repairing my item. Which means that my item will then be just gone. Which I guess isn't too bad because, you know, when it comes down right down to it, we would have lost it anyway. But at least I would have made some money out of it, you know? So, I guess we'll just have to figure out how much it costs to, to do a quick repair. Uh, and see how we go from there. But at least it's, you know, nice that we can actually... Uh, well, I say repair. Technically, we'll call it repairing. Repair those uh, accessories to put the charge back in them. And this also got me thinking. And this is a little Lord of the Rings. Which is funny because I never... I didn't make it through the first Lord of the Rings movie. I, um... I started watching the first Lord of the Rings movie. And, yeah, a bunch of midgets. Barefoot midgets trudging along, you know, New Zealand, and it's just nothing was happening in the movie, so I stopped watching it, and I, I, I believe that the second and third movies are actually kind of cool, I remember I was in a, in an electronics store, and they were playing, I think it was, I think it was Return of the King, uh, no, it would, no, it would have been the second one, and there was a big ass battle, and I was actually standing there watching this battle. I'm like, oh, this is a pretty cool battle. This might actually be interesting to watch. Might be interesting to watch. Nah. That first movie took me off of watching any other Lord of the Rings movies. Also, I don't like Harry Potter and Lord of the Rings. Because they're too mainstream for me. I gotta, I gotta keep it indie, man. Gotta, gotta stay indie. You know how it is. That's why I'm playing Arena, for fuck's sake. Um, gotta keep it indie. Well, Skyrim's not that indie. But, you know. Whatever. Neither is Borderlands 2 for that matter. True. True. Well, whatever. And they're the majority of your videos. You know what? Why don't you just shut up now? Okay, fine. Let's just shut up. But it got me thinking. Right? All this talk about artifacts in Arena. What if you had a ring? Right? That lets you warp and change reality. So... Are we, uh, what's the, what's that X-Men character name? Uh, Scarlet Witch, right? So, reality warping abilities, right? So, this ring allowed you to do that, right? But like, you know, items in Arena, it's got a charge. Well, first, I was, this is before I actually researched Arena, I was thinking about this. And I didn't realize that it actually had, the uh, artifacts actually have charges. I thought they disappear after a certain amount of uses, but we don't actually know what that is. So, you've got this ring, yeah? You can warp, bend, change anything in reality. You can do the impossible. You can make a portal in your closet that goes to a closet somewhere in Japan. Or in my case, have it go maybe back to Australia or to America. Anytime I want to go back, back, you know, see my parents, see my, you know, have a jack and stuff, I can just walk through that closet, and uh, have my jack and I, we can play some YOLO, you know. And then I can just come back and come back to Japan, and, you know, you know, you do anything. But here's the thing, right? It's got a certain amount of charge. We don't know what the charge is, but when the charge runs out, the ring's gone. You can never use it again, right? And the way I think of it is. The more, the more that you are bending reality, the more impossible that you are making it, the more exponentially you are using your charge. So, if I say, I want, I want, you know, a, a can of Coke, 
Alright? And I just magically create a can of coke in my hand. Doesn't use a lot, you know, yeah, I'm creating a thing. Right? Out of nothing. That is, you know, bending reality. But, it's just a can of coke for frig's sake. Even if it was a $10 note, you know, it's not a big deal. But if I'm creating that portal that goes into my closet, that's really bending reality, you know, it's a, a big difference. So what is the first thing that I would do with my reality bending ring? Well, same thing that I would do <coughs> with the first thing that comes to mind, and the whole reason why I come up with these fantasies, when I was talking about the, uh, <coughs> the ability to go back in time, uh, like to a, a fixed point in time, or to the ability to be able to pause time, what's the first thing you would do with this stuff? Duh! Get tons of money! <laughs> then you wouldn't have to work, you wouldn't have a, you, you wouldn't have to, you know, work, you wouldn't have a job, you could just r relax at home, you could go out to fancy dinners every night, you know, you could do whatever the hell you wanted to do. Of course that's the first thing that I'd do. This is where it comes, the same thing in reality would happen, well, the going back in time is a bit of a, an iffy issue. If you've got $20,000 in the bank, right, you can spend $20,000, and when it's run out, you can go back in time, and you still got the $20,000 again. And you just keep, you know, repeating that to infinity. Pausing time is a bit of a problem. Certainly with this reality bending thing, it's also a problem. So if I make a suitcase filled with money, let's say it's one million dollars, alright, so I got a, a suitcase, physical suitcase, with physical one million dollars in cash, what am I going to do with it? Well, okay, well I can spend cash at restaurants, stores, electronic stores, whatever. Can I buy a car with cash? Is that suspicious? If I had $20,000 in cash to pay to buy a car, I guess I could get away with that. You could... Could you get away with buying a house? Maybe? Here's what you couldn't do. This is this is where the, the tricky part gets in. You can't really take a suitcase of $1 million into a bank and say, I want to deposit $1 million. <laughs> because, yeah, the bank will do it, like, you might get some funny looks, but it's going to raise a couple of ra red flags. Firstly, the bank is going to investigate why the hell do you have a million dollars in cash? Second thing, they might notify the authorities, and the authorities, both the taxation department and the police, are going to go, excuse me, Mr. Leo, <laughs> what? how did you come to get one million dollars? Do you have a job? Where did this money come from, good sir? And this is where it gets a bit tricky. So what do you do? Well, I had the idea, the great idea, of going to Switzerland, right? Creating my money in cash, opening a Swiss bank account, where anonymity is like the law <laughs> there, and opening an account. I believe that would still raise some concerns. Um, I know for a fact it would raise concerns in Japan because there's a whole, there's quite strict terrorist like laws and stuff here. So what do I do? Well, I could use my reality bending ringy thing to instead of making the cash, I could say, okay, I have an Australian bank account. I want to put you know, $10 million into my Australian bank account, so that I have $10 million in there. So, okay, so, yeah, so that I could do that. Now, if a computer, I, I would assume banks have a little robot that runs around in the computer and looks at people's accounts to see how much money is in them. When my bank account, that previously has like $100 in it, <laughs> Because that's how much money's in it right at the moment. Um, <laughs> because, well, I'm in Japan, so why I even have money in it? But uh, also, I, I put most of my money into my home loan so that I can keep the interest rate down. Um, just the $100 is like emergency stuff. Um, 
If that bank account that currently has $100 in it suddenly has $10 million in it. That came out of nowhere. With no transaction records of where it came from. Robot's probably going to raise a red flag and the bank's probably going to go, this is obviously an error in the system. I need to take away my money, hold my money while they investigate, or I've got to get friggin' arrested and they're going to invest like investigate where the hell this money came from. So what do I do? Okay, well I can use my reality bending abilities to, one, put the money in the account, and two, make a justification as to why the money is in the account. So make records of where the money came from. I can also, three, make it so that I change the mindset of anyone who looks at the account so that they accept the fact that the money is there and there's no problems here, nothing to see here, move on. Right? That now is using a lot more of my reality bending abilities. But you can do it, right? You can... I... I I uh, yeah, honestly, I really only need five million dollars to survive. You know, you can live off the interest. Just whack it at the bank. You earn interest. You earn like a hundred thousand dollars a year in interest. So who, who needs anything else? Um, I would go for ten million. Because what I'd actually do is I, I'd be a nice guy and give a million dollars to uh, most people in my family. Maybe a hundred thousand to my to Avo and Jack and some other people. Um, buy some property. Uh, meaning a house in Japan and a house in uh, Australia, and then that's it. You know, just live off the interest. But then, uh, for, for whatever reason, well, this, I was thinking about the Switzerland idea until I found out about the, the laws that they've got over there. Because uh, I just, my idea of a Swiss bank account is you can be the shadiest person ever, and they're just not going to ask any questions. Fortunately, that's not really the case anymore, especially if you're a foreigner. Um, but I was thinking, okay, well, if I'm going to make cash, this isn't, you know, in terms of making physical items, you know, it means more to me. But I'm not really bending much more reality making $100 million compared to $10 million. It's just 10 times. Whereas doing it on a digital level is a lot more, you know, exponentially. So why don't I just make $100 million? Let's just go nuts. Right? Then I could do whatever the hell I want. I'll pay a million dollars, you can do whatever the freaking hell you want it. You would have no problems in life. So that's money done, right? That's the first thing that I would do. If I still got stuff left over, what could I do? You know, there's not a lot that I would really want to do. I could make myself immortal. That's kind of cool. I could make it, I could turn myself into Super Leo. Which I don't know if I mentioned this. Super Leo is basically. He doesn't age. He doesn't get tired. Um, think of The Sims, right? You know The Sims? You've got your different, like, needs. You've got, like, hunger. You've got energy. You've got hygiene. You've got a bathroom. And you gotta, you got to, you know, do things to, to keep your Sim happy. Basically, my Sim is cheating and all the bars are on max. So I never get hungry. I, I don't know how this works, but I never, technically I never have to have a shower, I just self-clean. I don't know how that works. Never have to go to the bathroom. Technically I never have to eat. Um, I, I never have to sleep, I already said that. I never get bored. Like, I can play video games, but if I'm not doing anything, I'm never bored. I'm always happy, I'm always perky. I'm always comfortable. This is important. Uh, what was the other one? A room. I'm always happy with the room that I'm in. That's room's always room's always been a dumb need in the Sims, but anyway. But basically, yeah. And you know, you never age and you're immortal. That'd be awesome. That's super Leo. Right? That's that's bending some friggin' realities right there. Uh what else could I do? Um You could you could create a watch that could allow you to stop time. Then you could have the power from before, I guess. You could. You could use your reality bending abilities to make another ring that bends reality. You could you could transform your reality bending ring into seven 
rings that you need to wear all seven rings like five on one hand and two on like two fingers on the other hand in order to use it thereby with like password protecting your awesome like thing like someone can't just put the ring on and suddenly bend reality like the opposite way it's a good idea it's a good idea you could um we could change the waifu in certain ways both physically and mentally <laughs> uh right turn him into, turn him into a real waifu a subservient little creature it does my every bidding oh god now my now we're getting it now we're getting a bit of a god climax here i wouldn't really want to do much more than that honestly i really just want the money really that's all i want to do I prefer Super, Super Leo would be great, especially the immortality and never aging part. And that's about it. Wouldn't really want much more. You know, they say money can't buy you happiness, but you got money and you could be pretty happy. <laughs> right? You might not have, like, true happiness. I got the waifu, right? I got that part of the happiness, you know? I got the waifu. I'm in Japan. Makes me pretty happy. The only real problem I got right now is that I'm friggin' broke. I'm completely dirt broke. I have no money whatsoever. Um, I'm not really earning much money either with my current occupation. Um, and yeah. So, $100 million would solve that problem. Also, I could, you know, go back and forth to Japan. I go to other countries. Uh, I can invite my family. I have a Jack come over here. Um, you know, we can do all sorts of fun stuff. It'd be great. But yeah, that's that's what I would do with reality bending abilities. What would you do with reality bending abilities? Leave a comment. Write in the comments what you would do if you could bend reality to your will. And then think about how quickly it would run out. You, we got to be realistic. We can't just say, I've got a ring. The one ring to rule them all. That can let me do friggin' anything right it doesn't work like that you can't just wish for everything right you got to be realistic about it so you can use it but if you use it too much it's gone right so what would you do with it you know just leave, leave a comment now if it was if it was like the artifacts in Skyrim at least if the artifacts as far as accessories go uh, function any in the same way that uh, normal magical item accessories do in the game. Then let's say you've got 15 charges. That's like 15 wishes. But would doing something really, really reality bending, would that use more than one charge? How, how would it work? I, I don't know. Then If you think of it like you've got 13 charges, it's kind of like you've got 13 wishes. In the reality, then, you should really only have three charges. You know, the magical three wishes of Aladdin, you know. One, money. Two, Super Leo. Three, make my wife a bit hotter. <laughs> and, well, make her super, super waifu. So that she doesn't age and she doesn't get tired or bored or any of the stuff like that. Yeah, and you know what? Rather than make her hotter, I'll go, money, one money, two Super Leo. Three Super Waifu. Which also includes making it hotter. God damn it. Anyway, the point is... That's that's what I'd wish my reality bending abilities on. What would you wish your reality bending ability on? I'll let you mill over that. And think about what answer you want to write in the comments. Leave a comment. But when we come back, we should have arrived in Orcrest. We probably won't have. But we should have. Until then. I'll see you next time. My name is...